what is going on guys it's your boy so here brings a video here today bring guys a photoshop slash after effects tutorial on how to create your very uncool borderless webcam overlay i think that's how i'm going to call it as you can see my example here we kind of have the actual overlay rather than having a surrounding entire overlay with the, of course the theme of whatever the overlay happens to be around the entire thing but we kind of have it just sitting on this one little plate kind of like this courage-esque um example so i think it's pretty freaking dope the style itself is pretty simple as well to do for you guys' own sake and then after that we're going to move it into after effects and kind of show you guys how to do some really cool sort of like a little pop-up saying like hey you know on a time code, it's every three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, etc., and kind of have it say, "Hey, you can follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, follow me on YouTube. Uh, make sure you guys follow the stream, kind of thing." To have a little pop up as a reminder for people who are actually watching your stream or your video, and they can be like, "Oh, dude, I should probably do that because it being in motion kind of grabs people's like immediate attention, and you'll and kind of more or less likely get more impressions, and of course, more or less likely get more people to follow those social medias." So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get this video here to go on today, and uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's just do this. All right, guys, so go ahead and get started. I'm just going to go ahead and go to File, New, and make sure that your file size is basically equivalent to what your stream uh, stream resolution happens to be, like your screen size, which most likely is going to be 1920 by 1080. Most times it's going to be, and you can just go with this pretty much 99% of the time. So 10, uh, 1920 by 1080, resolution 300. You can have it at uh, 772. I just like 300 for my sake. Pixels, press Create, and you're good to go. So... What I'm gonna do for you guys, now if your webcam happens to be a size in which it's not uh, the sort of like ratio like mine, which is shrink down 1920 by 1080 kind of size, if you need to, you can just take a print screen of a full uh, shot, like just go in full screen mode in like Twitch in a, a previous video or YouTube, take the entire full screen, um, screenshot put it inside here and then you can just take the rectangle marquee tool and kind of like you know kind of draw like say hey this is how much size I need right but for me what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna press control J on my background which makes a copy and then I'm gonna press control U on my keyboard which brings up the hue and saturation table and then I can just go ahead and take my lightness and move it up a little bit that way it's now gray and just easy for me to see now right since my background is a different color but if your background is white you're gonna probably move your lightness to the left by the way right um now that I have this, I can press Control T my keyboard to go ahead and free transform. And then I'm gonna press Alt and Shift, hold the corner here and just make it as small as I personally need to. And I would say around this size is a pretty good size to go with because you can then of course always make it smaller inside OBS, but you cannot make it bigger because of course it's gonna make it look really weird. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and use the actual rectangle tool uh, now for this case, not the rectangle marquee tool, but the rectangle tool. And then I wanna click the top left, go ahead and go click on the bottom right, all the way to the bottom right, excuse me. And now I have this nice little rectangle. Now, for whatever reason, if you can't see this things up top, click on the rectangle that you just made with the rectangle tool and press U on your keyboard to see the uh, the fill and the stroke. You guys to make sure your actual fill is X'd out, which means it's no longer there. Make sure your stroke is like a nice yellow so you can basically see it, right? Because we're gonna change the color with a layer style in a second. And then you wanna go to window, Properties, make sure this table's up for you guys. Uh, you see this little box right here? This is your actual thickness of your stroke. I'm gonna go ahead and say 10 is a pretty good thickness. And then once you guys have this, you simply just right click on this rectangle, rasterize a layer. This will then, of course, clear the actual uh, like whole tool thing that we just did and just makes it a simple old kind of transparent, of course, layer of that nice little stroke. And then I can just go to the rectangle uh, marquee tool again and just simply drag, highlight, and get rid of this entire thing right here. And this will make sure and kind of like say to yourself that this, this is confirms that it's the exact same size that you need and you'll have no weird sizing issues. So that took a little bit to make it in just one line, but I mean, this is you know, now it's a little bit faster, okay? So I'm gonna bring this back in here. Now, if you guys wanna be like myself, and of course, like you see how like on my example, I have my webcam also here just for reference. Um, you can do that same exact thing, but for me, I kinda already know at least somewhat where it's gonna be, so it's not gonna really have to worry too much. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna use rulers. So Control R on your keyboard. I want you to bring in from the left, click, drag right over, and where you believe the middle happens to be, it'll sort of snap. You can see that, like, that weird snap that's happening right here if you guys look like towards the logo part. Right, you kind of see this weird snapping happening. That says, hey, this is the middle, let go, and you're good to go. So, what this is gonna help us do is, this is just an example. So I'm gonna kind of make this red so you guys don't have to worry about that layer, right? I can delete this uh, background copy, and this is just our beginning line, right? So I'm gonna make a new layer right over this line that we just created. I'm gonna use the pen tool, which is uh, pressing P on your keyboard, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and make these nice little sort of bottom bars here. So just nice little compliment bottom bars. So I'm gonna say like move a little bit farther down from this actual first line, the bottom line of this, uh, this simple line, right? And I'm just gonna click on actually the ruler itself. That'll make sure it kind of says, hey, we're right in the middle, right? Hold shift 
go all the way down here, I would say, and hold shift also while you click on a weird angle. So if you click on an angle here, right, it's just gonna be like an whatever angle, but if you hold shift and click on a bit of an angle, it'll make a perfect 45 degree angle for you guys, which is gonna be really nice and smooth when everything's at nice 45 degree angle and not a guest angle. So now that you have this, hold shift, go all the way to the line again uh, of the ruler, make sure you click on it, and you combine them by selecting where you uh, began, right? Right click, fill, drop down use color use whatever color you can just basically see for now right press ok right click delete this path i'm gonna drag this path now below this line right then i can press alt and shift and drag it right over to go ahead and make sure i say to myself this is now a copy or if you would like to you can just press ctrl j on that new layer uh excuse me on that actual little uh, pen tool layer and hold shift and move it towards the right why i'm holding shift is because if i were to hold shift and move up and down it can only go up and down now because i'm holding shift i'm going left and right you can't see it but if i let go of shift you can see it now moves freely and you don't want it to be that you want to make sure it stays in that same line that way everything is symmetrical so holding shift moving it over control t flip this vertically not vertically sorry horizontally right and then you'll see just make sure you guys line this up with this line right here and you have a nice perfectly symmetrical sides on, excuse me symmetrical on both sides little line there right so my bad for hitting the mic uh i'm gonna go ahead and make another new layer right below this line again of course and that's gonna be this part so i'm gonna click a little bit above go over come in this angle while holding shift still i'm holding shift the entire way right click fill stroke uh, excuse me fill color right with that same as that color i'll drag it over Control t flip horizontal i'm kind of going through this because we just literally did this and now we kind of have one more portion over here i'm going to do for this one i'm actually going to move these two lines up just a little bit okay and i'm going to make a new layer again and i'm going to go ahead and say right here so I can make sure if I click right on the top of that part, I can make sure when I duplicate it and flip it over that I can just put that por uh, the portion on the other side right at that little tip. That way it says and confirms to me that, hey, this is exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to go ahead and do that portion right here, holding shift the entire way, right? And make sure I also line this all up. And now that I have this, I'm going to right click, fill, use color, delete the path, move it over, control T, flip it horizontal, and just line this baby up with that right there right very very super super simple and i actually want to move this down a little bit right so this is a little bit further down this is a little bit for uh, a little bit higher and now what i can do is combine all this stuff together including the line right right click it so the way i actually did that by the way i'm gonna click on the line hold shift click on the last layer that you just created for the actual box itself it'll select everything in between and then you can press right click convert to a smart object which will put everything in a nice little group for you and if you ever need to move anything let's say if you just like said oh crap i moved this like one pixel to the left after like a little bit you just double click on this little page it'll open it up you move it where you need to move it and then you press file save or control s and it'll actually fix it in the live document size that you're working on right here so now that i have this i actually have a nice little um style that you can use so this style runs through three different things so inner sh uh inner glow which is linear dodge mode uh linear dodge add mode uh, I'll pass it to say 30 for keeping it even. The color that I'm using for this is 242B33. Okay, and the uh, ch uh, choke is at zero, size is at one, range is at 50. Uh, I also have a satin on this, which is blend mode on multiply. The color for this is 18395D. Opacity is at 11, angles at 90, 10 distance, 32 size, and then your gradient overlay is on normal gradient little uh, uh, picker here. So on the left hand side, we have 07172B. I'm going to go on the right hand side now, and this is 1B253D. Press OK. Press OK again. We use this actual color scheme, by the way, uh, in a previous video for our overlays. I just like it so much. I'm going to use it again. Press OK. <laughs> excuse me now we have this nice little simple really clean look to our border and i'm gonna add these little super highlights as well by just simply going ahead taking my pen tool i'm gonna go ahead on a new layer as well right click on this line again of course go hold hold shift go over here holding shift still click on this line hold shift right fill this in with the color that i like to use for this color uh, for this color scheme so i have blue for the actual main Green is a highlight, so 2FFFF87 is the green, right? Delete the path, move it over, control T, flip horizontal, and make sure I just line this up with the ruler, and it makes sure I keeps everything symmetrical, right? And then I can go ahead on another new layer, 
I'm just going to click in the middle, right, with a rectangle marquee tool, okay? Click in the middle, hold Alt, and just move it towards my right. My mouse is moving towards the right, and I'm going to let go. Now that I kind of have it, it's going to be perfectly, when I'm holding Alt, when I click in the middle, it's going to keep that orientation and make it the same length on both sides, okay? Then I can press Alt Backspace, since my actual foreground color is that green, I can press Alt Backspace to quick fill it. Otherwise, you would right-click, fill, drop down, use color, and get that green again, okay? So I'm going to right-click, deselect, and I'm going to say that is exactly what I want. Now, this last little part is doing these little three little dots, and I'm going to do that by just simply making a new layer above the line, okay? Taking my pen tool, since everything is at the same exact angle, of course, it's going to be holding shift again. I'm going to click somewhere around here, hold shift. It makes that nice little 45-degree angle for me. I can move this down a little bit now, right? Now, I'm going to go ahead, just move this over, holding shift, hold shift again, connect it. There we go. Now, on this new layer, I'm going to right-click, fill, drop down, use the color, select the color right of the actual uh, little clip, uh, little pencil that you just did, and take this blue, take the circle, and just move it a little bit further down. Now, when I say a little bit, I mean quite a lot of bit. So I'm going to use 04080F. Now, excuse me, this actually might be a little bit different for you. Whatever color you're going to be using, just make sure it's a little bit darker, but not too dark where it's black, just enough so that it's, of course, going to be seen as almost like an uh, indention inside this overlay, right? <laughs> now I can right click delete the path Now I have this nice little style for us that we're gonna be copying for a second So it's just simply two inner shadows. So if you guys are not using um, the newest document for uh, Photoshop itself just change this 88 to 100 for one of them So for the two inner shadows, it's on soft light a simple white for your actual a uh, color 88 opacity if this if you don't have the newest Photoshop you use hundred uh, angles at negative 44 distance at 2 0 choke 0 size and the same exact thing and your duplicate just click on this arrow by the way or this little plus button by the way right and then uh, just simply it'll copy the same exact settings but just change this now to 32 okay press ok now I'm gonna go ahead and move this over by holding alt shift and dragging it over alt shift dragging it over my smart guidelines are telling me these are all even so I can then go ahead and these three, I can click the first one, go to the last one, hold shift, it'll select everything in between, right, control G to merge it all together, and I can hold alt shift, drag it over, control T to flip it horizontal, and I'm gonna kinda guess where this is, nope, good old smart, smart lines, cool. So, now this entire portion is done, besides this little green that's on that needs to go on top of this, so you see this like, little shadowing here, I'm gonna make a new layer above my line, right click, clip mask it, Right, so if you guys did not know, if I, I try to click green right now, I have this green, I'm clicking over it, it does not look good, uh, or excuse me, you cannot see it, and doesn't look good too, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> you cannot see it because these lines here, the gradient overlay, you cannot put a color uh, that has a smart object, excuse me, you can't put a uh, color that's clip mask on top of something that has a gradient overlay on it. So you have to right click on this again and convert to a smart object. That way now your green can actually show up. So I'm gonna quickly do this again, new layer. Right, I'm gonna take my green. I'm not gonna click exactly in the middle like this hard heart. That looks pretty cool though Okay, but I'm not gonna click in the middle there I mean if you wanted to that looks pretty cool to you you can do it as well But I'm gonna kind of uh, move my actual circle a little bit further down from clicking on the actual overlay and kind of give myself nice little Lighter tones, right? I'm also gonna click on the right hand side a little bit as well Right give myself a little bit some of that right if I need to take my eraser. I'll erase a little bit too. Okay, and I'm gonna also click on the outside of this canvas just a little bit, right? That'll come into handy in a second, uh, in After Effects, actually. So now, you can put your name here, your logo there, you're pretty much done with that bottom portion. Now for the top portion, also, before we actually move on to that, you guys wanna make sure, you see all this stuff, this is just the indentions, right? I'm gonna actually merge this all together, right? These are just the little indents, okay? I merge those two things together by just simply clicking up over them with a control and then pressing control E, right? Do it again. Click on this one, hold control, click on this one, control E now, merge together, okay? So for that, I'm gonna merge those together. I'm gonna also, right, I'm gonna release this clip mask for the green for a second, right? I'm gonna take my indent, put it on top of my line, okay? Right click, con uh, create a clip mask, okay? Uh, hold control and select both of them, right? Right click, convert into a smart object, okay? And then I'm going to right click on my actual green again and convert it, uh, excuse me, create a clip mask once again. And now this is on top of this. And if you need to now erase a little bit more, you can so that that is not over the actual uh, little indents. 
There we go. Just so you guys know, right? And these little portions here, we're gonna merge these all, to, uh, all together. So all these little green lines, okay? Control E, very, very simple, right? These are now the green lines. <clears throat> and now I want you guys to go ahead and just group everything together just like this down. And you're gonna call this the main box, okay? That's gonna set you guys up when you guys go in After Effects. So this part on the top right here, you guys know exactly now how to do it. And that's just using the pen tool once again on a new layer. You can literally do the same as I think now. You guys should know how to do this. If I gotta teach you this, this is a no-no, but I'm gonna at least show you guys just to start this off. You just simply take your pen tool, holding shift, right? Make that first side, you fill it in, you flip it, right? I'm just gonna do that for a second. I told you I was gonna do it and I'm still doing it. I'm so nice, I hate it, right? You can see this now, you can't really see it too well, but I'm just gonna make it a little bit lighter for you guys, right? And then you can literally just, before you actually might wanna, okay, so you see how the indents are now inside this uh, little smart object, double click on this, right, to bring it back up, okay? And you can take these indents now and move them out of this into this one to kind of make a, a nice little copy for you guys, okay? Right now that you have it here, if you need to, right, I'm gonna press M on my keyboard, cut these three out by just layer V cutting and then control T uh, excuse me control T on this make them shorter if you need to and if you want to I think I only have two on the top on my actual example here I do you can just erase one okay and then you kind of have these there then you can just kind of you know you get the point how to build it hopefully now I'm gonna go ahead now and once you guys save the entire thing let's just pretend that's done and this main box is now done as well um you might want to also kind of make sure with a box again, right? I'm gonna actually do that. Control J on the background, background, excuse me. And then make sure this is good by just kind of doing something like that, right? That's like that. So you wanna make sure this top box that you guys end up doing is also above this by just a little bit, okay? And once you guys have this, you would also merge all that stuff together in that top box besides the actual text. So everything gets merged pretty much actually. So you don't have to really worry about the top box. Once you have that done, everything literally becomes one layer by just right click converting to a smart object. And then you guys can move it on into uh, After Effects. Of course, file, save as, save it as something you guys know, you guys remember, be able to find because you're gonna throw it right into After Effects right after this. And uh, yeah, so top box pretty much like, I'm not, it's not gonna go through, but this is here now too. And this bottom part just has the actual, uh, this moving freely. The indents all together, green lines all together. Now we just know, just wanna make sure. Okay, now we're gonna move on into After Effects. All right guys, so right before I throw it into After Effects, I just wanna quickly show you guys how your setup should end up being. It's the Twitter logo, right? I have the Twitter.com or whatever you wanna end up advertising. If you need multiple things, you can put multiple things. Um, if like, when, when I wanna put like, you know, uh, how do you say, like uh, your you know Instagram and stuff like that, just don't group it all together, we're not keep it all loose and just kind of like color code it just so you guys know where you're at in Photoshop at least or make sure you guys name it. Um, naming will make it way more easier for you guys. Um, the main box is in its own little group with just the indent being fully done, the green lines being fully there, uh, combined, excuse me, was what I meant to say. And then the uh, green overlay is uh, just clip mask onto the top of the actual line or the box itself. Now, what I want you guys to do is make sure you press C under keyboard, which is the crop tool, okay? I wanna take this and drag this just like so, about an inch or so, I, or you know, a, a few, like, just to give a good amount of space right away from it. Like, you see how like very simple amount of space that's left around it, right? Same thing with this. And then same thing with the right hand side. Okay, I'm gonna press this check mark here. You can see how much simple space now, and the actual document size itself is gonna change a little bit, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and press save as, or I'm gonna save it for me personally, and then now we're gonna throw it in After Effects, which is just like this, okay? File, import, file. I'm gonna go ahead and find out where mine is, just like so, right? Import. Okay, I'm gonna make sure my import kind is on composition, retain layer sizes, layer options is on edible layer styles, and I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. Now, you're gonna see that borderless uh, tutorial, whatever, and for me it says borderless webcam tutorial, whatever you guys name your file, you guys wanna make sure you look for the type that says composition. I'm gonna double click on that, 
And now that you guys see that it's going to open up the same exact size that you just shrinked it down. And what this is going to help you guys do is this little top box here, if this was to come out of frame and come in frame, you see what I mean? It would look like on the actual webcam or on the actual gameplay screen or your whatever you guys are doing in your video, right? It's going to look like it just came out of like nowhere rather than coming from all the way from the top of the canvas or whatever, kind of like coming all the way down. You don't want that. That looks really, really weird. You want it to come in and like come into frame, right? Like a little cool little, like a, like a slice, right? So now we have this, I'm gonna take this box here, this main box, I'm not this main box, this webcam example box, get rid of it. Okay, I'll keep the background for now, but the very simple things that I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna change my actual uh, timeline to be the size or the, the, the amount of times I want it to actually rotate. So for me, I maybe want my, uh, Twitter to stay up there for me like 30 seconds or so, and I want it to repeat every 30 minutes. Okay, or not 30 minutes, three minutes, excuse me, sorry. Uh, this can be whatever. If you're gonna put Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff, you might need like, it'll stay up for like a minute and a half, right? You just switch it and it comes out. It's now Instagram, you switch it, and then it's now, um, you know, you're, you're following me or something like that, right? Whatever you guys want it to be, let it be. But for me, it, whatever duration has to be, you just kind of leave three minutes after that. So if you want your things to stay up there for one minute, 30 seconds, your timeline should then be plus three minutes, which is gonna be four minutes, 30 seconds. You get what I'm saying? So composition settings, you just simply right click on the canvas of the timeline right here, kind of go to composition settings, just like so. Your duration is uh, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. So this is gonna be zero, zero, and this is gonna be a nice little three right three minutes press okay i'm gonna take this down here shrink this all the way down to the left this will show you guys the entire timeline now what i want you guys to go ahead and do is select all these layers by holding shift uh and click the top one holding shift click on the bottom one it'll select all the things in between you take this and just stretch this all the way out just like so right this little webcam example box does not really matter uh oh by the way if main box is not stretched all the way you have to actually double click on it get into this composition Right, and then make sure this composition setting is set to three minutes as well. Right, you're gonna probably have to do this, okay? So all I ended up doing was, right, you see how this, you see this little little symbol here, this little kind of like picturesque symbol, that means it's its own composition, right? Then you have to double click on it, go into this composition, make sure you guys change this composition timing to also be three minutes, okay? You guys get that? So it's gonna be two different things you gotta do. And then you can, of course, make this a lot longer as well which is what you need to do. This is also its own composition. Then you have to go into here and make sure this is three minutes as well. <clears throat> that is what happens, by the way, when you guys group things together. Uh, you have to actually switch everything because it's its own composition. So groups in Photoshop uh, mean it's a new composition in After Effects. So now that they're all their own composition, you guys will be able to now make this a lot longer and it'll be that three minutes that you guys need it to be, which is perfect. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and say at 30 seconds, I wanna make sure I have the main box. Sorry, I had to like go do something really quick. Okay, so at 30 seconds, I'm gonna take the main box, right? This is, if I just kind of highlight and uh, or uncheck and check this eyeball here, it just kind of says like where this is or what this actually happens to be, of course, by kind of like uh, getting rid of it and putting it back in. I'm gonna go and make sure if I wanna, of course, I already double click on this, but double click on it. This will bring me to this composition, right? And that'll tell me, I forgot to name this by the way, but this is actually my glow. Glow, the green glow okay so if I were just kind of like uncheck and check you guys will see that it's of course appearing and showing uh, and I'm gonna go ahead or appearing disappearing right so at 30 seconds okay I'm gonna go ahead and press P on my keyboard which brings up the position uh, period right you want to come with the position so now I want to do is when I press this little keyframe here it'll say at this point at 30 seconds it'll keyframe and be at this position where you want it to be at originally right so now you can go ahead and say at zero seconds, I want it to also be at the position that it is right now. So it kind of, of course starts and ends right here, which is pretty freaking good, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say, right, let's go ahead and go up to maybe about like four seconds or so, let's go say three seconds. So three seconds, I'm looking right here, by the way. So mm, one more frame up, I think there's like a key frame to do, is it page up and page down? I might be wrong, it is. Right, page up and page down on a keyboard can put it to key uh, to can put it to exact uh, or go one frame by one frame. So you can put it to three minutes by just simply pressing page up if you couldn't get it exactly. Okay, so I can then go ahead now and take my position and I'm gonna move this a little bit further down. Okay, right enough so you can kind of still see a bit of the green. Uh, I would say you can still see a bit of the green. Right, you can kind of still see it just like that, but not as much as this. But it's perfect because I want to kind of say, hey, from here. It's gonna go down and kind of show like this, 
which is perfect. Then I want to go over here to three seconds ahead, which is six seconds, right? So this is at three, right? I'm gonna take this keyframe, or I'm gonna select on the first keyframe, which is the original position, control C, and then on this spot right here, I'm gonna control V, which will then say it goes down, then up, right? So then I can just take all three of these keyframes, highlight them, of course, control, uh, control C on my keyboard. Then I'm gonna say every three, right? So it's six, let's go to nine, right? Right here, if I gotta go page down, I will, or page up, there we go. I can press control V on my keyboard. So it'll go down, up, kind of stay at that, uh, at that up, right? And then go down, up, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and say, excuse me, if you want the pulse rate, by the way, to be even faster, of course, you can just kind of like uh, shrink in the amount of time. Like I wouldn't do three seconds, I would do two seconds, you know what I mean? Um, and then just copy and paste after those three every two seconds. You guys get it? So I'm gonna go ahead and say 15 seconds, let's go up three again, which is gonna be 18, right? Control V, move this down. And then last but not least, it would just kind of say, mm, I'll do like the last one. Now I'll kind of keep it right here. Why not? Right? I'll do. I'll kind of do that. So it'll post eight. Uh, pulse eight. Right? And it's very very. So you want. You don't really want your animations and your overlay to be super like just like seen all the time. Something very subtle is pretty much good enough in my opinion. And it doesn't really distract you from the gameplay or the video itself. So now that this is pretty much done, right? Does a nice little pulse eight. You can just go ahead and copy this all the way through, guys. All the way through the three minutes. Uh, I'm gonna kind of just speed through this for a second. Okay, so I went ahead and just copy and pasted it. It didn't really take that long. I just want to make sure if it did take long, you guys have to watch it. But I kind of just like went at random as well. So kind of just, you know, do this nice little pulsate for like three minutes straight, right? And it's super, super subtle, right? It's not like it's too crazy going on. So now I can go back to this over here. Now, if I look at it, it'll do this pulsate. Now, if it does get a bit much, I would probably say just delete a few of these, uh, a few of these grouped keyframes. So like I want to do it every like, like consistently. I'll do something like this, like more scattered. Right, so kind of like just do it heavy in the beginning, kind of stop, do it again, kind of stop, and then when it repeats, when it loops, I'll show you guys how to loop it and whatnot, right? It'll just kind of restart over, right? So it's not too, too crazy. Okay, so now this is pretty much done. If I just go back here really quickly again, so it's gonna pulsate, pulsate, pulsate for about a minute and a half or so. It's gonna stop around one minute 45, it'll go again. So I have this little break. So right here, I'm gonna say, I want my animation, this top part to come in at like, let's just say I want it to come in, at mm, three minutes, by the way, when I'm thinking about it now, it might be a little bit too short. I, I don't know, just, yeah, I would probably say test it. I'd probably do like seven minutes, just for the sake of just kind of like really quick. Um, But it all depends, really it all depends on you. But I'm gonna go ahead and say at around two seconds or so, I want this to come, or, t or three seconds, why the heck not, right? So three seconds, I want this box over here to come in. So I'm gonna go ahead and find this top box, and I'm gonna make sure that this is not in, oh, before I do that actually, I want this position. So, P on my keyboard, right, is the position. Keyframe this at two seconds. However, in the beginning, or I would say not in the beginning, but not zero seconds, but I would say like one second, this is not in the frame, okay? So, it's not in the frame, right? And then all of a sudden, it's gonna sort of come into frame, right, but I want this to be way faster, and I also probably want this coming at two seconds, not one second. So, to kind of speed that little process up. All right, I'll say, you know, one second goes by, two seconds, and now this will kind of pop in. And now that you see how like, kind of like boring and like lamely consistent that is, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these, right click on this keyframe, keyframe assistance, easy ease, go on to this graph editor, okay? Um, if your graph wants to look like mine, make sure you guys have edit speed graph, which is right click edit speed graph, okay? I'm gonna then highlight these two points, this is basically determining what kind of the, uh, the, the, I was gonna say inertia, would that be also a good word to use? Probably not. Um, but just sort of like this, this basis of time frame to where the point to point is gonna be. So if I were to move this up, okay, you'll notice, right, that it's gonna be very quick and then a little more slow at the end, right? But I want it to be almost like very quick in the beginning and then a little bit more slower and kind of like, just finesse, right? You see how it kind of nails down? So what I ended up doing was, if I just do this again, I highlighted these two keyframes, move this one uh, more to the right, right? And then move this one a little to the left. Okay, so you'll see again, it'll kind of do this nice little subtle come in. Okay, now that that is pretty much done, 
I'll go ahead and gun uh, or uncheck this graph editor, which will bring me back to this timeline. Okay, so we're going to see it again. Uh, one second, two seconds, it comes in. Perfect. So I'm going to say right when it gets around here, I want all this stuff to come in as well. So I'm going to do something very simple. It's just a linear wipe. I'm going to go to Effect Transition Linear Wipe. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say linear wipe. I want it to be completely gone at this point. So I'm going to put my linear wipe at the time. I want it to start coming in at completely zero, which is around here. Okay. So oh, no, it's not zero, 100, which is not, which is, sorry, I completely confused that. So completion is at 100, which means it's pretty much saying that this completion is done. So if it's done, it's not there. Okay. So I want to keyframe it just like so right at this point. Also, if you cannot see your keyframes on your timeline, select the layer that you put that keyframe on or with that effect on and press U on your keyboard. Okay. So I'm going to say right at this point, it's going to be gone. And then right about here, once it kind of finishes settling, right, I'm going to put it at zero, it'll appear. Okay. So it's gone and it's going to appear right just like so. It's going to go say, Hey, boom, box comes in text now is there right if you want the text to have a little bit of easy ease as well we can do that so i'm going to right click uh, key from assistance easy ease graph editor take this move this a little bit in move this a little bit in right and it'll kind of do this nicer sort of like flying right that's pretty nice so now that that's done we're going to do the same as that they want to copy these keyframes right onto the twitter logo but i'm going to go a little bit further so this i could have put it right on the top of this one it'll be the same time which I might have to do. Uh, let's just see what happens. I'm gonna control V now that I have those keyframes copied. Control V the same things on the Twitter logo. I'm gonna go. Oh, that does look pretty good. Right? So you just copy the same exact ones. That looks pretty nice. So this is gonna be what's gonna happen here, right? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Move, please. Thank you. If I just kind of put this timeline out. All this stuff is gonna be happening. This is gonna be pulsating, right? Remember that? And then I'm gonna say right about 30 seconds is enough time for me to kind of say, okay, I'm done like I'm done kind of like advertising that. I want it to go back to being a nice cleaner overlay, right? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take all these things. So the Twitter logo, the twitter.com so HQ, and the top box, which is of course that top box, right click, make it a pre-composition. Okay, press okay. Now in my control C V or whatever, I have the same keyframes as the thing we just did before. If I just control V again. Right, copy those same exact ones. If you guys don't know how I'm copied, it's okay. You pretty much know how to do it from this. But except for making this 100, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna just change it. So the beginning keyframe here is gonna be zero, and this one here is gonna be, ooh, let me get there, 100. Okay, so what's gonna happen is it's gonna go all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, and right around here, it'll go away. Right, and then it'll go right back to just being a nice, simple, old overlay, and it's just gonna be a nice little pulsating, right? And then when it restarts, right, it's gonna go back to the beginning, of course, it's still not gonna be there, but then it'll pop it up again, right? Then it'll pop it up with that nice little simple animation that we just did again, which is pretty cool. Um, Okay, so to render this baby out, make sure right that is transparent so if you guys can't tell it's transparent you can actually click on this and uh, enable transparency grid but you also want to make sure any background layers that you also have is gone okay but if you also want to see them you can just kind of check it again to kind of see uh but now it's transparent i can press Control m on my keyboard which is a uh, render queue excuse me but if you guys want to go to render queue you can go to composition uh add to render queue just like so and you guys want to make sure this best settings is perfectly fine you can leave it there uh, output module, you want to put this baby on format. AVI is pretty good. You can even use QuickTime is also okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use AVI for this. And I'm going to make sure I go to post render action and put it to, uh, not post render action, excuse me, channels. Make sure I put RGB plus alpha, right? Okay. And I'm just going to probably put it on QuickTime because I like QuickTime a little bit better, right? Make sure your channel's on RGB plus alpha. The plus alpha part makes sure, uh, makes sure that it's actually transparent when it renders out. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this audio input is off because I don't have any audio. Press OK. And then you want to put this direction or uh, what is it called? Di di dire direction? Directionary? What's the word? Dictionary? No, it's a direct, direct, directory. Ah, we got it. We fucking <laughs> bees. Um, okay, your directory is put, of, of course, where you want to put it. I could have just said put your file where you want to put it, but I'm, I'm just an idiot. So now that this is done, you press render. Okay, and I'm going to render it out for me. And I'm going to show you guys how to actually put it in, of course, to OBS.
All right, guys, so now we are in OBS. I'm going to show you guys how to quickly put this inside your OBS, of course. Uh, it's just literally one thing. Um, probably already know already. However, as well, if you guys are going for a time frame in which you want your overlay to repeat every 7 or 10 minutes, it might, the actual file size, depending on your animation that you're doing, um, if it's not just based on my tutorial, you're doing other stuff as well, uh, keep in mind, you might have a really big file size, so you might have to use something like Media Encoder uh, to actually, like, uh, to, to shrink your file size down, right? And what I like to use is I like to use H24 six or two h264 or something like that right uh just so you guys know and um you can just basically shrink it from whatever gigs it happens to be to literally megabytes so just keep that in mind for future reference so i'm in sources pretend this is my uh my video my webcam right pretend this is my overlay uh my, my gameplay there you go jesus christ okay uh new okay uh media source we're gonna go to okay right i'm gonna go to local file right here i'm gonna scroll down and go to right here Press open, okay? And I'm also gonna make sure that I loop it. That's literally the only thing I'm gonna do. You press loop, you press okay, right? And I'm gonna go put this on here. You'll see this is gonna pop up. Looks pretty freaking cool, right? Now you're gonna make sure you shrink this to where you think it needs to be. Now, if you guys cannot see, if your eyes aren't the best and or you just, you're not close enough, right click, preview scaling, scale to uh, nice 20, press shift, uh, hold space, and then just move it, right? And then you can kind of get really in here and make sure that your media source is what it needs to be, right? And I'm gonna say, that's pretty good. Cool, so once you guys have, make sure you guys lock it, okay? And I'm just gonna say, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch scenes for a second, you'll see how it kind of works, right? You switch scenes, they're on this seat, excuse me, uh, and you're gonna see, nice little pop up, it's gonna, sta uh, it's gonna stay for 30 seconds, right? And then it's gonna go away, it's gonna be nice and clean again, right? Just a simple little bottom overlay piece. And then, it'll, of course, three minutes goes by, it'll restart and show whatever you guys wanted to show again, just like so. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I killed it, I think I killed it. Um, I don't know why overlay videos are so long, but I hope that you guys understand that they're just kinda gonna be like something you can just uh, really learn from, okay? And uh, yeah, increase the person that you're probably designing for, make your portfolio stronger, make your client happier, make your stream better. Oh, that was good. I'll talk to you guys later, Sesso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later, much love.